there's always a couple seconds delay, but yes, I see it. So while Rona and Steve start sharing out this uh, Quilt Babble Live, this is our February edition. I'm basically just going to say hi and kill some time as they start sharing on their social media. And also to give some of you guys a chance to pop in and um, get settled in for tonight's episode. So tonight's episode, as you guys know, uh, was supposed to be in January, but unfortunately life happens and we had to cancel our January episode, but we're back tonight. Um, and our topic is a quilter's bucket list. So this should be really fun. Rona, how's it going? You got your stuff shared? Are you ready to rock and roll or do you need a couple yeah. more minutes? No, I think so. I got it shared to the business page and the Traveling Quilters group. And then I think Steve's going to share it to the So Indipitous stuff. And and I think we got it. I think we're broadcasting. Yay! Yeah. I see. <laughs> the Wizard of Oz, Steve, had already put a message in the chat room. What page are you streaming on? We are streaming live on our Quilt Babble Live with Lisa and Rona. I did it okay. correct. It's been yes, two months. It's been two months. I totally forgot where this was going. <laughs> I'm looking on the wrong page. Well, it does happen, just like Rona said earlier. It would not be the first time that Lisa streamed to the wrong page at all. Nope. But anyway, nope. so as a quick, um, just to catch everybody up, since like Steve said, it has been two months. So clearly we survived Christmas. We survived the new year. And um, we're already into February, so I feel like it's been so long, Rona, since we've got to talk to everybody. But now that you have left the Carolinas, I'm feeling detached. What's going on in your world? So, yeah, we uh, we got up here in December. We're now in uh, northern Indiana, just outside Fort Wayne, and we got settled into the house. And, I mean, there, there's still some boxes, I'll be honest. <laughs> like I was telling Lisa earlier, I got my sewing studio to the point where I can use it. But now I've got, like, my recording studio and everything that's still boxes and nothing's up on the wall. I even bought this really cool shelf thing to go in there. It's in the box. It's, yeah. So, eventually... I'll be streaming from there when I get it set up. But until then, you get to see where all the magic happens back here. So fun stuff there. And I just want to take a minute really quick and just say thank you to everybody that commented and sent messages last month. Um, it was a last minute family thing that I had to fly out to Nevada. And um, just I we really, really appreciate all the prayers and, and all the good vibes and everything from everybody. So thank you for that. So, I'm going to stop talking right? about that before I cry. Okay, moving <laughs> on. <laughs> We're going to keep the prayers go going your way for sure for you and your family. So even though I was whining just a few moments ago that um, you know who left the Carolinas and moved away, she's going to be back this coming week. And Rona, why are you coming back to the Carolinas other than obviously to see your grandbaby? Well, to see you, of course. <laughs> but no. <laughs> But also because the Charlotte Quilters Guild is having their quilt show out at the Ag Center in Monroe uh, next Friday and Saturday, so March 3rd and 4th. Um, and you can go to the Charlotte Quilters Guild website, which is, I believe it's charlottequiltersguild.org uh, for more information. Or you can go to my website, ronatheribiter.com, to see that show and all the other shows that are listed throughout the year all around the world. And then there's also where uh, a list of all the shows and guilds and stuff that I'll be visiting this year. So maybe we can run into each other somewhere. Absolutely. That's what I was getting ready to say. If you are local here to the Charlotte area and you are feeling the miss of Rona in the area, make sure you go to the quilt show so you can see her. She does have a booth right next to us. So indipitous. So you will get to see her grab your hugs and all of that. But uh, I did see Rona, I think earlier today or yesterday, you had posted a place that you're going to have your talk soon. I can't remember what state, but you're going to do your modern to traditional or traditional to modern. It yeah, was a beautiful so classroom. That's what caught my eye, the picture of the classroom. Yeah, so um, about... I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes from here, from where I live now, um, is a little town called Angola, Indiana, which is this far from Michigan. 
And we uh, are, the cool shop owner, Cammie, is fabulous. And they're in this beautiful old building that's right downtown Angola. Wow. And the bottom is the quilt shop. She also has three long arm machines. So they do long arming, but they restored the entire second floor into a retreat center. And that wow. room that I shared the picture of, that's their classroom or the workshop room for the retreats. So that's where we're going to have a lecture. It's free and open to everybody. It's April 2nd uh, at 1 p.m. And I'm going to be doing my traditional to modern lecture and, um, and then hanging out to just chat, answer questions, and, and just kind of have a good time and get to talk to everybody. <laughs> Absolutely. I will say I have had the pleasure of hearing your traditional to modern uh, program. It is fabulous. Definitely eye opening. And this is a great segue into our conversations tonight about bucket list. So let's start at the top. We're going to talk about, okay, guys, we're going to talk about all things bucket list quilting. So just bear with us as we go through it. And feel free to chime in in the chats um comment ask questions put your bucket list things in there and um the wizard of oz steve that's watching our chats he will pop it into our chat room so we can uh talk about your all's bucket list but number one up is techniques and that's why i love the segue rona from your your speaking engagement about traditional to modern so how did you have that on your bucket list of going from traditional to modern? Because I know that's a, on a lot of people's list. So let's talk about that. Well, actually, um, it wasn't. It was teaching. <laughs> well, actually, before I even created a, quilt, a quilting bucket list, I'm a yeah. firm believer in like vision boards and, and things like that. So I've always had those. And when I yeah. started quilting, it was kind of a, in the right place at the right time when I started teaching. Um, so the traditional to modern was just kind of how I, um, that's kind of my thing, like just how I, I started quilting and, and how my brain works with the whole, like, uh, I don't know, ADHD. It's not really ADHD. It's really, I don't know. It's, it's very jumbled and very colorful. So we're, we're going <laughs> to go with the word improv. <laughs> it was organized chaos. That's what my husband calls it. Organized chaos is what my brain is. So that's how the, the cool thing came out. But um, actually, the, the bucket list for me uh, techniques, um, I didn't even really know until I started teaching, ironically, about all the different techniques that there are out there to learn. Like I thought it was just traditional piecing, and then I figured out applique on my own. Uh, yeah. And so then of course I, I i still love applique but um personally my on my bucket list right now as far as techniques that i'm working on if you can kind of see it in the background there on the design wall i'm working on my very first collage quilt so oh, okay. um, yeah so that's one of the big techniques that i see for people is the um learning the collage quilting um absolutely so you know as we're talking about techniques and then we you know we'll dive into what type of designers that we'd like to do their pattern bucket list you named one of them on my bucket list which is laura honey her collage patterns i have a couple of them i've been collecting fabric that i want to put in it but i haven't tackled that yet but that definitely is a technique that is on the bucket list collaging that's actually the the color part of it and it's like it's another ironic because that's what the traditional to modern lecture is about is i talk about using color and fabric in and placement in order to make the modern designs but with the collage it's really um i'm i'm going outside of my my normal my comfort zone with this one because right. with collage it's supposed to be uh random but like organized random you know and i i have trouble with random. I did one collage quilt, but not, I was a crazy quilt that was yes. um, it just a 12 and a half inch crazy blocks, all shades of green. And oh my gosh, it was the, one of the hardest quilts I've ever done because it's random for my organized mathematical brain. Yeah. The, that random technique hard. Yeah. For me, but yeah. it's a lot of fun. And I am my, I have a friend who, um, She's done several of those um, Linda Heine type collages, and they're yeah. amazing. I am, I'm not there yet. I'm not, I'm not comfortable enough in my own. 
I cannot even believe that. No, no, no. I cannot believe that. I think it is you just have not had the time because I can see you really mixing and matching. You know, when you're cutting out these little motifs out of fabric and just really collaging them all over the thing because you love bold colors. So I can see you doing amazing at that. But definitely collaging, that's at the top of my list. Like I said, I've been collecting something that's on the top of my technique list and you know it's not necessarily i mean i do have others i will say hand quilting i will hand quilt at least one quilt in my life just before i die to say that i did but that's a technique but um i had put at the top of our list one of mine is the new york beauty and i was for just those, looking that up <laughs> well i was gonna say so it's not really the new york beauty i want to do so i have several books that's behind this quilt on my bookshelf that i have been collecting over the past year or two about new york beauty quilts and how they were created and that kind of stuff i want to create a virginia slash carolina quilt versus a new york beauty so i will bring oh. in yeah, I want to bring in really the stories of my life. Like anyone that doesn't know what a New York beauty quilt is, there's different blocks that represent, it's all needle turn applique. Look at my, I mean, uh, it is a very time consuming quilt, but they are absolutely gorgeous. If you don't know what it is, Google it right now so you can see them. But there's a lot of people over the past several years that have been creating, like I said, their own quilt. And we say New York beauty because that's where this originated from this look right. this technique but right. i want to do mine and i've already figured out okay i want a block that represents the coal mines from back home in virginia because that you know my dad worked my grandparents mm -hmm. uh grandfather my uncles they all were in the coal industry so that's going to be one of my bigger blocks is that and then i'm just going to trickle it down because half my life's been in virginia and then um this latter part of my life has been in the carolinas so i just want it just oh look it yeah. up google it guys it's on my bucket yeah, list and i can tell you so one of my favorite quilter quilting teachers that her specialty is the new york beauty wow. is uh, Linda J. Hahn, and you got to make sure to put that J in there because there's another Linda Hahn that you get confused by. So Linda yes. J. Hahn, she's from New Jersey. She is an amazing lady. She is a kick in the pants. I absolutely love her, but that is her specialty is, and she's got several different patterns and books all focusing on the, the New York beauty. It yes. is on my bucket list as well, but I'm like you, I, I don't have the patience for handwork. And, and I, I, as much as I love applique, it's all raw yeah. edge. <laughs> well, now this is the thing. I love the handwork. I don't like the needle turn of it. Like I will do mine more of, um, with the paper underneath, you know what I'm saying? How I can't even think of the proper technique to say, but you know what I'm saying? Where they'll yeah. use the freezer paper templates and press the fabric well, and then applique it on. Can I go ahead? To jump in real quick so yeah. a technique that i learned that i love um but actually i figured found it out through um, english paper piecing which we were going to talk about that too uh is instead of using freezer paper use wash away fusible stabilizer because then you don't have to take it out you just oh. leave all of them in and then you finish your quilt and you wash it and it's it's not super thick like yeah. the regular things because it's um it's wash wash away so the fire yeah, like you use thinner. for your machine embroidery like if you're doing freestanding lights or something exactly use that as your templates instead of the paper or the freezer paper golden nugget tonight i like that i like that <laughs> i've not heard that before um I'll definitely have to test that because I'm like you, raw edge applique. I'm your girl. Love it, love it, love it. And I do love the other applique where you can't see your stitch and everything's tucked under, but I just don't do the needle turn itself. Um, but I'm going to try that wash away stabilizer. That is a golden nugget. Thank you. Thank you. Like I said, I, I learned that by accident with uh, uh, doing English paper piecing. I ordered the wrong templates. <sighs> okay and yeah and i got these and i'm like oh these are really cool and then it dawned on me they sell this by the yard <laughs> i can just go buy and make my own 
<laughs> exactly, exactly. So you kind of mentioned it a while ago, um, and we're talking about English paper piecing. So that was on my bucket list. I can now mark that off because I did learn how to do that during the pandemic, and I'm obsessed. Love, 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 love. Again, I... I don't have the patience for, I have had the same project of English paper piecing in my little Yazzie bag, my little travel Yazzie bag that I use for my projects. And it's right. been in there. I take it with me with uh, like on road trips and stuff with the purpose of working on it. Sometimes I do like when I'm on a long airplane ride, I'll bring it out, but oh my gosh, I, my brain just goes a million miles a minute. And so to quiet myself down. Maybe I should do that. Like use that instead of um, doing a meditation. I could use that as my meditation. <laughs> and that's exactly what I was going to say. Let me tell you, the girls that um, helped teach me how to do English paper piecing, they laughed at me because when I started, I love, you know, the thread basting to the paper, right? Mm -hmm. And so I have like a million and one hexes done and they would laugh at me what are you making? And I'm like, I'm making hexes. And they're like, no, 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 no. What's the bigger, bigger project? And I'm like, I don't know. I may <laughs> die. And you know, when my family goes and cleans out my quilt room, there's going to be a box of like 10,000 hexes. So the next person will get to connect them. Like, it's just so therapeutic to sit there and just, la, la. yeah. Love and I, I, I don't do that. I glue based mine. I do if I'm in a hurry, but I have to be until, in a really big hurry. Until I started using that fusible wash away. <laughs> true, true. That's a good one. Okay. So Cindy Bennett commented that she likes the New York beauties, that they're very fun. And I would really like to know, I don't know, Cindy, if you're still watching, why are they fun? I, I, I'm, it's not <laughs> a question. It's, I, that sounded really bad, but I didn't mean to. I just, what, what makes it fun for you? Like which part of the, the te technique makes it the most fun for you? Cause like for me that like raw edge applique, I love that I can do anything, absolutely any shape that I want, I can do it. And I don't have to worry about like turning the edges under and stuff like right. that. And, and then I love actually, this is so weird, but my favorite part about it is stitching the edges when you're actually stitching the applique down. Yeah. I love that process of slow turning through the machine and getting, plus you can use all kinds of different decorative stitches yes. and, and yeah. So I, I used to hate that part, but after I kind of mastered it a little bit, now I'm, I just get so proud of myself when it just turns out so perfect. I, I get it, but I must giggle at you. Just like, what is it that was fun about it? Because that made it sound like it's horrible. It's yeah, that not came horrible. up bad. It's not, no. So, so why we wait on her to answer, I will tell you why I think it will be fun. Is just because of what I was saying, of me creating it as a story, basically, of my life. That's going to be the fun part for me, is, is the, the beginning, the prep work, you know? Yeah. Oh yeah, that's always my favorite part is the the beginning part, pulling the fabrics and and yeah, then it's most exciting. And then usually about halfway through putting the top together, it starts to slow down. And yeah. then once the, if I actually get the top finished, then it's a matter of oh look, I can hire a long armor. <laughs> that's my least favorite part is long arming. So she so that oh, is not so a bucket okay. list technique, long arming for you. Uh, no, that is not a bucket list technique. I, I hire somebody to do the the long arming because I, I just don't have the time anymore to do the, yeah. the quilting myself. Plus it was my least favorite part of the quilt of making a quilt. So yeah. Cindy commented, she said um, hers is done. She does hers on machine and she likes to pick the fabrics. She said, pick the fabrics, all the colors, just everything. Yes. Yes. Great scrap buster. I agree. So that yes. is definitely a good scrap buster. And yeah. EPP is a good scrap buster too. Those can Absolutely. Be fun. And, and I feel like we have to have these projects for that, right? Or yeah. you have a good quilty friend that loves doing scrappy quilts and you can just push all your scraps over to them. But let me tell you, I keep my scraps because I never know when I need this little bitty applique something that needs to be just this little funky whatever. Like, no, I got to keep it like obsessed. Okay, so since we're talking about like the New York beauties and, and all of the, well, we got a little bit, we haven't started into foundation paper piecing. We talked about English paper piecing. But I love every time, foundation. 
like foundation paper piecing. You cannot talk about found foundation paper piecing without talking about Miss Judy Niemeyer <laughs> and her absolutely stunning quilt. She's one of those designers where it's like you walk through a quilt show and yeah. it's like, yep, yeah, that's a Niemeyer. That's a Niemeyer. You can, you know, you can pick them out there and it, it's fun. I don't know if, so Mark Sherman, his master quilter, Mark Sherman, he's, uh -huh. um, uh, he came to our guild in Charlotte multiple times. And it was funny. He tells this story about when he first um, wanted to learn to quilt and uh -huh. his mom uh, took him to the quilt shop and he saw this gorgeous, beautiful quilt hanging up. And he said, I'm going to make that. And she said, well, maybe we'll start with something a little <laughs> more basic, you know, to get things going and because he saw a Niemeyer and that's what he wanted to make and yeah. it was like zero that's like going zero to 150 you know just a hundred percent yeah I I I believe it can be done I've seen people do some amazing things right out the gate so but that is definitely I mean I don't even he know he was aiming high for sure he was yes yes because I would like to know if anybody on our group here has has done a Niemeyer because I that's another one that I don't know that I would have the patience for but God, I love them they're so beautiful so I have a Judy pattern laying and waiting for me to pick fabrics, but I love foundation paper piecing. So it is so not intimidating to me, but it is on my bucket list because it is not, you know, when you do like what you're talking about, one of her queen size or, you know, whatever, you cannot do that and work 80 hours a week and get it done in any time or fashion. So that's why it is on my bucket list um just waiting to find the right fabrics um to go with it so last night rona was our york county quilt guild meeting and our speaker last night was kathy groves and she is a certified judy niemeyer instructor and stuff and so she, it was over zoom and a couple times you know the internet was splotchy and you really couldn't hear what she was saying but let me tell you i didn't even care if she even opened her mouth because as she was doing her slide presentation of her quilts and she's done tons of judy niemeyer's fabulous breathtaking mm -hmm. colors yeah, I I'm intimidated so the colors in her quilts don't intimidate me but what intimidates me is the teeny tiny little sliver and i i know that foundation paper piecing is really the only way that you can get those tiny right. little points like that but i that's what intimidates me about about her style is is those just those tiny little points but um yeah she's she's amazing so uh, another thing that you had listed when we were like brainstorming for this was um fabrics because we talked yes. about techniques so fabrics that are outside of our comfort zone. So I'm a, I, I have a little story about this I'll tell real quick that I tell in some of my um, uh, lectures. I took a class with Kay Facet uh, several years ago and I thought that I, I mean, I thought that I was pretty good with color. You know, I had already been designing patterns at that point and I thought I was okay. And then I, so I pulled a bunch of fabrics uh, for his class and I had them stacked up on the table. We were doing his diamonds and <laughs> he came up and he's looking through and he's like, where's the, where's the contrast? Where's the wow? And I thought I had one and he said, no, no, no. Now I had a bunch of his fabrics that were like pastels, right? Right. And so we go over to the table and he pulls out this, I mean, chocolate brown fabric with giant green leaves on it. And then he hands me one that's this obnoxious mustard color with purple flowers. Yeah. And then he hands me one that is this giant Charlie Brown, yellow and black chevron. And he's like, start here. I was quite literally, I mean, I almost had a panic attack there in the classroom because my anxiety just shot through the roof. And I, it was weird when you think about it, like how is fabric going to cause anxiety, you know, but it wasn't until I took that class that I realized how much fabric and color really yeah impacts us as as human beings just in general our our mood and, and everything yes so yeah and i definitely noticed that like i'm sure you're the same i kind of go in um like stages like yeah. i'll do i'll lean more towards purples 
for a while and then maybe more towards reds another time or, or whatever, depending on what's going on in your life. Things Absolutely. like that. Yeah. So I tell everybody when they're like, what is your favorite, you know, type of fabric? I'm like, listen, I'm a Gemini twin split personality so today i might be working with 1800 repo fabric repo fabric but you know reproductive fabric and it may be repo but i don't know and then literally two hours later you might see me working with like some cave and to me cave's one of the wildest out there because of exactly what you just explained and it, it totally wax and wanes. But if you think about it, we're like that about music in our life. There's sometimes we want slow music, calming, whatever. And then other times we want to blast some kind of 80s song. And I know my brother's rolling his eyes because I'm saying 80s because he says I'm still stuck in the 80s. I, but when I it comes playing, to music, I, I am. Was, I was playing Peter Gabriel before we got online. So I am with you. <laughs> there you go. He's put, he's giving me a thumbs up. So that must have meant <laughs> that he was rolling his eyes because, you know, I really am stuck in the eighties. And I think there's a song, Ronnie Millsap, stuck in the eighties tonight. Or I don't know. No, that's the fifties. I love me some Ronnie. But anyway, that is so true. So when we're talking bucket list, there may be some fabrics out there, Rona, that these quilters would, you know, they see their friends working with and they think, oh my gosh, that's fabulous. I would like to do that, but just like you said, when he started pulling out certain prints or certain colors, you kind of started freaking out. And that's the great thing about a bucket list is you can be like, you know what? 1800 reproduction fabric is so far out of my list, you know, or my comfort zone. That's not what my house is. But when I see a quilt made with it, I, I think of grandma's house. I think of cozy cabin. And it would be nice to have one of those old fashioned quilts. No one is saying you've got to make 50 quilts with 1800 fabric or 50 right. quilts with K fabric or whatever is outside your comfort zone. But just like you were challenged by him, we should challenge ourselves for that same thing. And I had to giggle at you when I mentioned about using solids. What did oh, you say? Yeah. Yes, I, I am. I am a print junkie. I, <laughs> so I, honest to God, I, I, uh, I have started two quilts that are all solids fabrics, and I haven't even made it halfway through putting the tops together. And yeah. I don't know what it is about solids, but doing an all solid quilt, I'll use solids as like a contrast or something, because that's definitely part of the contrast in your fabrics is you want busy with solid but almost always we're talking probably 85 percent of the time i'm going to go to a print that reads as a solid right. versus an actual solid color fabric and I, I i don't know why i do that i just that's i mean that's kind of my thing i guess I, but i will tell you i do also love solid fab or solid quilts like um, charisma horton she is yeah. probably the best known pattern designer all of her patterns are 100% solids and they're fabulous. Right. She's got a new uh, pink barn quilt design yeah. line that she's coming out with. They're awesome. Anyway. <laughs> well, I had to giggle when you said, cause for those of you, what we're talking about is I, I had put on the list when we were talking about fabrics and getting out of your comfort zone and what's on your bucket list was I put solids and then I had said, you know, are you a print junkie? And of course, Rona was laughing and said, um, I am the print junkie. But Rona, I will tell you what shocked me about that. You use a lot of grunge. So grunge is borderline solid. So you're really right at the cusp. You just don't know it yet. <laughs> Well, like I said, that's, that's literally like, it's a print that reads as a solid. So uh, yeah, I definitely, grunge is very much my go-to as far as, right. yeah, the, the solid type stuff. I have a lot of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So what about, um, th there's a lady that comes in the shop all the time now, and she has opened my eyes up to some funky print fabric. She cannot make a quilt. Unless it has, I mean, the most crazy, funky prints. And she puts them all together. And at the end of the day, it's fabulous. I would be having a panic attack, like you were saying, when Cave was throwing you whatever. 
but yeah. I have learned just in the past year and so indipitous watching these ladies put a black and white stripe or a black and white polka dot with these funky prints and oh my gosh talk to me about it rona well the, so i did one and it's funny that because the the black and white i don't know what it is but it's if you take black and white and you put any color with it doesn't matter what color it's just gonna pop off and it's because um any color against black specifically right. is gonna look brighter but that black and white contrast really just pushes that the color out my in fact my stargazer quilt i get that's the it's black white and red right and it has i get the most compliments on that one because it's well like i said the the black white and red but um even when they did there was an exhibit that was all um or well it was the red quilts but there was like black white and red and right. I, I mean they they're just absolutely gorgeous and you could do so many different things with just black white and like i said any prints or any color absolutely it, the the funny thing to me is i will buy and over the years in my stash i have some funky prints and you know in our brainstorming notes i put you know funky prints and i said oh my gosh my eyes because <laughs> if a bunch of those was in a quilt your <laughs> eyes have nowhere to land but i'm telling you i'm seeing how these girls are working in, like I said, a black and white stripe or a black and white polka dot, whether it's just framing something or whatever. And I guess it does give your eyes somewhere to land a little bit off of the funky prints. But if you've ever been afraid of front funky prints and it's on your bucket list, I'm just saying dive in, throw some black and white in there. You're going to be golden. Yeah, I definitely think that the biggest thing to add to for as far as fabrics on your bucket list is make a quilt that's outside of your comfort zone, like yes. using everybody has that color that they just really don't use very much. For me, it's usually orange. I don't use a lot of orange rarely. So it's it, it, but everybody has a color, right, that they yes. just don't generally gravitate towards. So maybe you could put that on your bucket. And it doesn't even have to be a big one. Like for me, a, one of the, um, well, we were talking about techniques. One of the things that's on my bucket list is to make a miniature quilt. Like I, I'm making a oh. sample. I'm making a sample right now for uh, my next book that'll be coming out uh, next year. And yes. in it, I'm using uh, pieces that are, that finish at half an inch. And um, I realized that that's not as bad as I thought it would be, but then I'm thinking, okay, it's on my bucket list to go down to a quarter of an inch finished pieces. So, no. I mean, I, I mean, have you seen the ones they're, they're in, um, they've been in magazines, there's, they're at the different, um, like the National Quilt Museum, the Hamilton Quilt Museum has the biggest collection that I know of, of the miniature quilts that are like actual bed size quilt patterns, just miniaturized like doll size that's i my love book. miniature quilts but rona i may not buy your book if we're down to oh, a no. short, like uh-uh so you just mark that off my bucket list right there no this this sample i promise is just going to stay at half an inch we won't go any further it better further be some foundation book. paper piecing at a half an inch actually i i was surprised it's really not i mean it really forces you to uh yeah. focus on your quarter inch seam um yeah. but i've been doing um uh what am i thinking uh, not a full but um a scant quarter inch seam yes yeah, is what i've been quarter. doing and yeah. yeah it's actually once you get into kind of the groove of it, it it's not so bad but yeah i i'm it is on my bucket list to eventually do one that's quarter of an inch we'll see yeah. how that works out. I, I love all the miniature quilt blocks it's so fun but you definitely got to get into the mindset and someone had told me one time when you go to work on these miniature quilt blocks put away your big iron put away your big rotary cutter you've got to minimize all of those to small so your brain is thinking small and i just yep. thought they were crazy but i actually did that and oh my gosh it does make such a difference because like you said your mind is going into that um before mm -hmm. we move off of fabrics one last thing i can think of that used to intimidate me was metallic fabrics with metallic in it uh fabrics with metallic not so much for me but metallic thread is i just can't get the hang of that <laughs> that I intimidates metallic me thread but it is finicky in your machine mm -hmm. like you got to go real slow and that is not my strong suit i'm pedal to the metal yeah 
Yeah, I'm a definitely. Teenager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. So, Raina, our next topic on our bucket list is one that I know you're very passionate about because the name of your company is The Traveling Quilter. So, I just want to open up this conversation and I'm just going to sit back and let you run with it. But all of us have all these different techniques, designers we want to do on our bucket list, or types of quilt, fabrics that we might want to do but we also have quilty travel on our bucket list. So Rona, give us some great places because you've been to so many and I know you're headed off to some others. So what is some things that was on your bucket list that you did or is still on your bucket list for travel for quilting? Okay, well, the biggest thing that was on my bucket list was a uh, quilt tour, like taking a quilt tour. And I was able to do that in 2017 and that's really what kicked off the whole quilting travel business part. Um, but I will say, so quilting related travel, if you're able to travel, um, just here in the United States, we have some of the most amazing places. Um, last summer, I was able to check off uh, going to see the Dignity statue, which is the Native American woman that's standing with the Lone Star quilt holding it out. Yes. And she overlooks the Missouri River. And it is one of the most amazing. I have a picture of me standing next to it. And I think I come up to her chin. I mean, she's that tall. I'm writing um, this down. I actually forgot about her. Oh yeah, she's she's definitely should be on everybody's bucket list, in my opinion. Um, also, another great place is Cozad, Nebraska. Now, I we came across Cozad, Nebraska because it Spell was that. Uh, C O Z A D Cozad, and it's exactly. um, it is a tiny, tiny little town, but it is on the 100th meridian. And they have big old sign, the 100th Meridian, and it has this amazing quilt shop, Prairie Point Junction, that is specializes in wool, because of course they're in Nebraska, lots of snow, you know. Um, I follow but, them actually because of their wool. Yeah, I don't blame you. They, yeah, and they have, but the town has uh, a barn quilt wall that has every state in the United States. They have all of these barn quilts all over the city that you can, they have these maps, like trail maps that you can go to take pictures in front of all the barn quilts or whatever. They have these really cool um, artist palette things that are painted by different painters. Oh, just wow. the whole town is, is just artist and quilting everything. It's amazing. So that's on my bucket list. Also, um, or a good bucket list place, I should say. Um, and then we have the museums, of course. I have on my website a list of all the quilting museums all around the world, not just here in the United States. Um, so my personal favorite is the Hamilton Museum, which is in Hamilton, Missouri. Um, yeah. that, or is it the Missouri Quilt Museum? I can never remember the name of it. It's, it's either the Hamilton Quilt Museum or the Missouri Quilt Museum, one of the two. It's in a hundred year old school and it is just the most, they have actual American history along with the quilts oh wow so it's i mean because a lot of the museums like there's one in lincoln nebraska there's a museum there they specialize in more modern quilting yes um, and then so all of the different museums have more specialties but theirs i really like because of the history that they put in with it and they don't just have quilts they have like a thimble collection they have the largest miniature quilts collection that i've ever seen they've even got this huge textile print machine that they wow. used to use way back in the day to make uh make fabrics that wow. is still there it's yeah it's it's amazing um so okay so and then of course we have um your um international destinations those are just a handful by the way there's more stuff on the website <laughs> oh um, yes i was gonna say i was plundering around on your website um a couple days ago and i was just like Oh my gosh, who knew there was this many museums of quilting or things that give a nod to quilting. It's just mm -hmm. fabulous, really. Oh yeah, and of course Paducah. I mean, who can, you know, you got to put Paducah <laughs> on the list. Um, <coughs> exactly. But also, uh, so international, I'm actually, I, I am very, very thankful this year that I am, will be able to check off a few things on my list because I have had um, attending the Festival of Quilts in Birmingham, England on my list for several years. 
Um, I've, it's, it's one of the largest international quilt shows in the world. And I, like I said, I've wanted to visit there for a long time. And this year, not only will I be attending, but I will be teaching and giving two lectures at the festival this year. So, and that I'm, is like a bucket list. Boom, boom, yeah. boom, <laughs> mic drop. I'm so yeah. happy for you. That, that's a that's a big one. And then while I'm there, I'm also going to be visiting um, the uh, American the American Museum, which is in the London area. That one is, believe it or not, they have a collection of uh, Civil War era American quilts wow. in that museum. And it yeah, I so that's definitely been on my bucket list for a while. And then um, Liberty of London. Is, yes. So for those that don't know Liberty of London, the fabric, a lot of people are familiar with the fabric, but several people are not familiar with the fact that it is a department store. If you think of like JC Penney's back in the day, you know, the it's a, a full department store is also one of the oldest and most famous uh, department stores, but they have their specialty Liberty fabric that yes. is to die for. So I, as you can see, I, I can't wait to get my hands <laughs> I know. Please bring some back. Sneak us some like true Liberty of London fabric. <laughs> yeah, but there's also, I mean, things like there's quilt cruises that go all over the world, quilt yeah. tours that go all over the world. Um, that was another thing on my bucket list was to lead a quilt tour, um, which we're going to Iceland this summer. So um, you can check the website. I think there might actually still be a couple spots left for that one. Um, so, and that's yeah. to Iceland. Yes, that's to Iceland. So we're going to be going um, do it. So the tours, I get asked a lot, what's the difference between a tour and a cruise? Um, because like with tours, people will ask, why is there not more quilting? Um, because tour, if you want more quilting, take a cruise. Because <laughs> a cruise, you literally, they put you in a, a boardroom and you get assigned your own sewing machine to use the entire trip. The room's usually open 24 seven. You can quilt all day long, all night if you want to your heart's content. Um, but a tour is literally just that. It, it is a tour where you are traveling around from place to place and seeing all the sites and, and visiting. And there's usually some sort of quilting location or event that it is wrapped around. So a lot of them will be um, scheduled around like quilt shows, um, like the Birmingham Festival or the Sister Show out in California or the festival down in Houston. Those are big ones. Um, also, um, some of the museums, they'll go That's to the different... say, so There's a lot of quilt history kind of involved in some of these yeah. tours. Correct? And usually there's some sort of quilting person, either a master quilter or designer or something like me that will be taking you on this tour. So I'm, we're also for Iceland, for example, we're going to be spending the day with the Icelandic Quilters Guild and I'll be teaching a workshop while we're there. So Anne will be visiting the textile museum in Iceland. So how yeah. many days is a, a, that tour? I mean, I'm sure, sure all tours kind of vary in days and stuff, but for that particular tour, how many days is that? 10 days. 10 days of fabulousness. Yeah, 10 days, that one. And yeah, and cruises again, I mean, there's lots of different, like they, there's some where they'll take you on shore days and you can go to like boutique factories and they show you how the boutiques are made. Oh, wow. And I mean, there's all kinds of, yeah, those are like big, you know, bucket list items. And um, there is a, uh, so what started the whole thing, the bucket list thing, um, at least on my business side, I wrote a blog post several years ago that was the bucket list challenge. And there's three different levels of challenges where you can challenge yourself both inside and outside your sewing room. So like the level one would be visit five new quilt shops. And then level two would be visit um, 25 new quilt shops. And then level three would be visit one quilt shop in all 50 states, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> and it's been one of crazy. the most popular yeah, posts that, that I have, because there's all kinds of fun stuff in there that you can challenge yourself. Yeah, definitely. You can get lost in just the things that you have exposed us all to in a short amount of time. So I, I already know behind the scenes on the stuff you've got planned for the next 12 to 24 months. And 
just us being able to live vicariously through you is going to be absolutely fabulous. So you right now are like really ticking some things off of your list, your bucket list. And so why not, you know, I will be honest, owning a quilt shop was not necessarily on my bucket list. It did obviously get on my bucket list and I did check it off because I do own a quilt shop. But I, everybody laughs at me. I'm the queen of plotting and planning. I'm always plotting and planning stuff and, you know, making my list and checking it twice. So we have about 15 minutes left and let's help these ladies and gentlemen figure out how they can take things off their bucket list and make it a check. I've done that. So Rona, what would be one of the first things that you would say if someone says, okay, I've got my bucket list and I want, I want to make something reality. What's the first thing they need to do? Well, the first thing you, you put them in order. That's the first thing that I do whenever I'm making a list is I put them in order of which I want to do first. And you know, what, like one through 10 or whatever, however many is on your list. Um, and which ones are the most realistic that you can yeah. do now? Um, like for instance, if it's on your bucket list to do a scrappy quilt, well, that's pretty easy if you've got, you know, scraps. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you, you definitely put that one towards the top of your list. Um, yes. And then the next thing I would say is schedule out. Um, I used to have a, a lecture about that where I talked about 30 minutes a day. And um, literally what I would do is I would get up 30 minutes early before work. And I would have it already set up on my sewing table that this is what I want to work on. And so even if it's just, okay, I want to get this block cut out and ready. That's all I'm going to do. I got 30 minutes. I'm just going to cut out these pieces and then set them aside. So then tomorrow for my next 30 minutes, I'm just going to stitch the first few ones, however many I could do in 30 minutes. Um, and in, then in business, that's what we teach is when you end your day, leave on your desktop whatever that task is that you want to be number one and it is usually something that i don't want to say is trivial but it's not necessarily something that takes a long time like you said you've time blocked 30 minutes and we used to use examples of it's perfect to do your handwritten notes you know whether it's a thank you card or thinking of you or whatever go ahead at the end of the day put out that list of people that you need to write these cards for go ahead and lay the cards the stamps everything so the first thing you don't have any prep work you can just sit down and have at it and that's how to get that marked off your list mm -hmm. absolutely yeah and i do i mean obviously if you have more than 30 minutes you can do more than 30 minutes but the the, the key to it is having that plan that you're, you know, this is, this is what needs to be done first. And this is what needs to be done next. And because a lot of times, especially when you're looking at like, say a specific, like a Judy Niemeyer or, or something, a quilt pattern that is big, right. Yeah. And has a lot of pieces you want to break it down. So, cause those can be really overwhelming. Like for me, Judy Niemeyer is definitely overwhelming to me, <laughs> but so you want to break it down. And, um, so like, I'm just going to do this one little section and don't even think about the rest of the quilt. Just do this one little section and then do it one little section at a time until you're, you know, slowly chipping away. And then next thing you know, it's, it's done. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, in regards to planning guys, you know, it's like Rona was saying about triaging and I say triaging cause I'm a nurse and that's how I think about stuff. You know, if you have a bucket list of 15 things, you know, putting, them in order priority and like rona said what what is a definite something you can accomplish if you put your mind to it right um but once you do that sometimes the list still doesn't happen your bucket list still looks the same five years later and you know when rona and i were talking it all boils down to 90 percent of the reason things are not checked off the bucket list is because simply there was no planning that started if you literally start planning and you know Rhonda, what is something like so let's say for instance if you are planning a we'll use a trip because we know you love to travel but if you're planning a quilty trip what is some of the hard questions you start asking yourself you know like let me say this not planning the trip but knowing you want to go let's say for instance if 
if you were me and I said, Rona, I would love to go to the Missouri Star Quilt Company, you know, what would be some of your helpful hints that I need to do to start planning that? Uh, well, the first thing that you would definitely need to know is uh, like figure out when, as far as what time of year, uh, because that's the biggest, you know, you're looking at it, your budget versus the time of year. Cause uh, gotcha. obviously in the, the summertime is much more expensive because there's more people traveling and all of that. Um, so the winter time, there's going to be less money or less, uh, less expensive. However, like for depending on where you're going, using Missouri as the example, there's going to be snow and the right. RV park is closed. There's only one RV park in um, Hamilton, Missouri. <laughs> there's gotcha. hotels, but there's just the one and Airbnbs, um, but there's just the one RV park. So you really want to know where you're going, when you're going, what your budget is and where your lodging is. Those are the and how you're going to get there. So those are like the five biggest things that I would check off my list as right. far as making the plan. Absolutely. And, and, and that is typical, you know, I always revert back to business because that's what I've taught for so long is anytime you want to implement something, it does go, what's it going to take to accomplish this? And it is, how long is it going to take? How much money, what resources, da, 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 da. The other thing is once we've answered all of that and okay, it's going to cost me X amount of dollars. I've got, you know, in six months, I've got some vacation time. Yes, I can get a hotel or RV, whatever. Um, then I always like to say step backwards, right? So when you guys are planning stuff, whether it's a trip somewhere or it's a quilt, you have to set, and it's the dirty word, but set yourself a deadline. Because if, you know, the scripture in the Bible says, if without a vision, you shall perish. Basically stating, if you don't know where you're headed, you can't get there. And you have to set yourself a deadline. And I know that sounds crazy. If I want to do a Judy Niemeyer and I'm setting myself a deadline, if you don't set a deadline, the chances are you may not get there. Would you agree oh, with that, Rhonda, when you're doing stuff like for your business or quilting? Like, oh, it's, abs it's absolutely true. Like for a, a specific example, there's a quilt that I work, well, I'm working on too. But um, I noticed that all of a sudden two months went by and I hadn't made, I hadn't worked on the samples for my book. Well, I have to take those samples with me when I go to England this summer. So I'm, I'm running out of time. And I know that if I don't set myself a deadline, that this quilt has to be done on this day, this quilt has to be done on this day, rather than, okay, I've got six quilts that I need to do in the next five months. No, break it down to this particular sample that I'm working on right now has to be done by next week because right. I'm going to take it with me to North Carolina to give it to my lovely long armor. <laughs> So you well, have, and you, yeah, you take the big, whatever your big goal is, whether it's a trip or a quilt or even in your personal life, whatever the big thing is, right. and then break it down into, into smaller, more manageable pieces rather than looking at, you know, the scary whole piece. Yeah, it, it definitely, it's amazing. So for instance, we'll continue on what Rona's saying that she's got X amount of quilts that have to go when she goes over the pond. Um, so for instance, if you are doing a, a wedding quilt, that's a big one I hear in the shop all the time, such and such as getting married. I want to make this quilt. And of course it seems like everybody wants to make these big extravagant, you know, wedding quilts or whatever. And those do take time. But if you know that the date that this quilt needs to go to the new couple is here, then when I'm saying step back, you don't go to today on the calendar, you go to when the deadline is and you start stepping back. So for instance, Ryan was talking about taking a quilt to the long armor, right? Well, even though it's been long armed, you still have the binding to do. So mm -hmm. when I'm looking at, and I'm making up dates, but let's pretend the wedding date is December the 24th. That's, you know, Christmas Eve is when you're giving the quilt. So you want to start on December the 24th as knowing that's delivery day, right? Back it up about a week. And then that's the date. Hey, I'm wrapping it 
right? Mm -hmm. So you mm -hmm. have a buffer before you can wrap it. You got to get the binding on. So then, you know, I want to push back and give myself two days to get the binding on or three, whatever, depending on how you put your binding on. But then it had to come from the long armor if you're not quilting it yourself and leave yourself a buffer. Okay, I want it from the long armor, December the 10th. That gives you a buffer. Maybe your binding is not due till the 18th. That gives you eight days in case the long armor gets sick or, or whatever. So you want to bounce backwards, take your backward step. And I know that seems a little weird, but if you do, you will, you will definitely meet those goals. And like Rona says, as you're flipping through your calendar and you're looking what you need to do, maybe you only need to do three blocks this week you know and then mm -hmm. it, next thing you know the whole thing is done and leave yourself some buffers grace period oh yes yes <laughs> <laughs> so when you do it when happens you, you know <laughs> it does happen when you do your books rona i'm sure you have certain deadlines you have to meet with the publishers and that type of stuff right for any kickbacks or whatever mm -hmm. Well, yeah, especially because I mean, I've got well, I self published my books, but I still have to get it to an editor, I have to make sure that they have enough time to edit the book, then we've right. got to do the layout for the book. So I got to make sure I have all the photos and everything for the layout. And then what then we also have to put in a buffer time to get the sample book in to make sure everything's right. correct, nothing needs to be changed, then we got to make sure there's time in there in case something needs to be changed, then you got to place the order and take into consideration printing time delivery time so yeah you definitely yeah. have to start or take the end goal and work your way back yeah or take take into account that there could be a um coronavirus come and shut the world down <laughs> exactly or a train derailment or who knows what yeah there Anything is things can happen <laughs> that's right things can happen but more of the story guys you know we've only got a couple minutes you know i hope that you've taken away from this create your bucket list if you don't already have a bucket list in writing you do have a bucket list even for quilts or techniques because you all have stashes you've all bought fabric or you have bought patterns that you're waiting on the perfect fabric to marry to that but literally sit down and take a few minutes in your craft room and start making your quilty bucket list and hopefully tonight through rona and myself you have seen some bucket list things being checked off and you will be inspired to start doing that because as fun as it, as it is to live through rona and watch her i want to see you guys create the quilts that you want to create go visit the quilty places that you want to go and you know maybe we didn't mention it tonight but it's really important maybe you wanted um you know you always desire to have a little quilty bee you know a group of friends that you can come together with and sew and you just haven't taken the time to find or create that little group that is a big bucket list for you know a lot of people is to have mm -hmm. quilty friends and that you can sit and stitch with or as we like to say, close your ears, brother, but sit and bitch, you know, <laughs> sometimes we don't get as much stitching done. That's the best part about, about quilting it to me is the quilting community, no matter where you go. I mean, you walk in strangers and you leave best friends, you know, it's, that's, the, that's our, our community. And I, one thing I would add to that too, real quick is I'm a big believer. I think I said at the beginning of, uh, vision boards. Yes. I, I actually do create vision boards because when you see it, you can manifest it. The more you're looking at it, the more you're thinking about it, the more the 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 cosmos and everything else. And and yeah, so I, I'm a big, the big, especially juju. when you're talking, yeah, especially when you're talking about like traveling to places, quilty places. Yeah, vision boards are are big believer. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So guys, our next session is in march it is the third tuesday of the month i cannot march think 21st. of that what date march 21st march 21st and that episode is going to be about spring cleaning <laughs> and like i told like i told lisa i i can 100 percent guarantee your accuracy that my sewing studio will not be clean by the time we have that episode <laughs> Well, well, we've got some amazing tips for cleaning your studio, though. 
<laughs> That's what I was going to say. That and is organizing. A, yeah. March the 21st does not mean that your crafty sewing room has to already be organized. We're going to talk Russia. about how to get organized and some helpful hints and tips because um, I know we all need it. It doesn't matter how neat I possibly could have my sewing room. The minute I jump into a project, the room implodes. It it just happens. I yeah, I, I there, there's a reason why you can't see the floor behind me because I have this really neat, amazing new studio, but that just means there's more room to spread out the fabric. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. So, so in the month of March during that one, we will do before pictures, I'm assuming. And then April, you guys <laughs> will do the big reveal how you've used all the principles and stuff that you're going to share that night. Is that what I'm hearing? Rona, can we pretend we don't hear the voice of Oz right yeah, now? Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure who that was. I don't know. <laughs> hey, Rona, we can make a deal with, with the voice of Oz. Yeah. If we do before and after of our craft rooms, he's got to do a before and after of his office. Oh, yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm with you on that. <laughs> So, I will take that challenge. Oh, God. <laughs> I thought we would get out of it because I thought he'd be like, no. <laughs> okay. I don't know about the before pictures. I might be ashamed because let me tell you, y'all, this quilt is here for a reason. Every <laughs> month, if you've noticed, I've been changing this quilt out. This is not a design wall. These are always finished quilts that's hanging here because this is hiding a multitude of sin. <laughs> okay, Steve, I will um, come oh, April. No. Tracy said, Tracy said, Tracy. then we should all vote on the winner. <laughs> I love it. You go, oh, Tracy. Nobody you asked me, Tracy. <laughs> if, if you're saying that, so this is what we should do. I know we're past eight o'clock. Sorry, guys. This is what we should do. So we should have everybody post their before picture in March. If they post their after picture at our April uh, Quilt Babble Live, I will do a giveaway. Oh. I that will do like a plan. giveaway. We'll that do. sounds like a plan. I mean, who doesn't need, you know, if you're, cleaned up your sewing room that means you need new fabric to put in it right that's true but that also means that you and i are not eligible so we don't have to do it. <laughs> maybe well, i will have to get a giveaway for what you two if if you happen to be the winner oh uh, <laughs> you're I'm, not getting out of this well see that's what i'm saying this is why i miss rona because she and i think just alike <laughs> I was, that was a good way to get out, Rona. You should have zipped no, it sorry. and I said uh, anything. Tracy, Tracy says Moda will give prizes. Oh, oh. it's Tracy on. Okay, guys. Yes. So Tracy is my Moda rep and she is the one that helps me select fabulous fabric for so indipitous. So, okay, Tracy, first of all, hey girl, I wish she was on your live with us. You guys probably remember her from our December Christmas party. I think uh, Tracy wore um, reindeer antlers that night, if I remember correctly. So um, now you guys have a face to go with the name. So Tracy's already up the game. She's gonna throw in some Moda, Moda magic. Um, okay, I'm down with that. I'm or excited. It's going to be fun. <laughs> I'm actually going to get fun. a clean office now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was going to say. That's why it's not going to be fun. I don't want. Okay. I'm, I'm on it. I'm on it, guys. I am going to leave it with this. Steve has got us in trouble. Run it. We will try to figure a way out. In the meantime, <laughs> we're going to come up with some great tips for March, guys. So you all definitely, definitely, definitely get your before pictures ready so you can post them during our march live mm -hmm. the before pictures for march live post them into our facebook uh live stream that night and um i tell you what we may have to do a giveaway for the most atrocious <laughs> and then in april we'll do a giveaway for the most improved how about that yeah <laughs> I would probably win most atrocious yeah. if, oh my God, I cannot yeah, that even. Yeah, good. Yeah, Lisa, I, yeah, she might. 
It's, not, she might win that one. Listen, hey, I have boxes. Boxes, okay. <laughs> Leisures is in boxes. Y'all listen, mine was like, I'm not gonna say perfect because nothing was perfect, but mine was always pretty much nice and show ready because the quilt shop was here in my house. Um, mine has been upside down since I ripped all of this out last January and I've been working so much. So everything is still disarrayed. So Steve actually has the before pictures when it was nice, not the- so just so the right, contest those don't count numbers. anymore. <laughs> those do not count anymore. <laughs> but she's right. It has never recovered since the shop left the house. It has never recovered. Steve, I need you to come on camera. Okay. So guys, just so you can see, look how pretty and the ambiance in Steve's office. <laughs> this is the camera ready zone. <laughs> you don't want to see anything else it's actually quite hilarious i will not turn the camera around and let you see uh just trust me on this yeah this looks like peaceful and serene <laughs> it is so not that but this is the sad thing we we were talking before we went live everybody that steve's looks so amazing and here i am hiding crap and he goes but you can't see what's in front of the other side of the camera and i was like okay but at least you have one decent place i don't even have one i think that if, if nothing else zoom has taught us all how to hide things <laughs> Well, I'm not gonna lie. I think it was the December one. I already had my pajama bottoms on. Like oh, I was. I <laughs> hey, we're I was... on the East Coast, man. <laughs> Seriously, exactly. As soon as we hang up off here, it's like straight to bed, right? Well, in the December one, I was. I would literally. We had been here. I think what three days. <laughs> <laughs> not even boxes everywhere and the only thing think, you saw was the dining room wall that was it <laughs> i think you were sitting on the floor i'm pretty sure <laughs> anyway guys we just want to inspire you to hopefully up your game no matter what it is whether it's quilting or your personal life or whatever and also we just want you to see it's okay to be real and honest and just laugh and joke about it because we're all friends here and um, we'll see how friendly it gets in March and April. <laughs> It'll be fun. <laughs> sure it will. <laughs> Guys, thank you so much. Rona, thank you again. I cannot wait to see you this week in the Carolinas. Come yep. and visit me and Rona at the Charlotte Quilt Show on Friday and Saturday. I think that's the third and fourth of March. Yes. Yes. Yep. At the Ag Center, the Agricultural Center in Monroe. Yes, in Union County. And you can go to Rona's website to get information for that. It is on our Facebook at So Indipitous as well. And of course, if you can't um, meet us there in person, always meet us here on social media. We both appreciate all the thumbs up, the hearts, the shares that you give to all of our pages. Of course, ours is soindipitous.com, Citizens of So Indipitous, and of course, Quilt Babble Live with Rona and Lisa. And then yours, Rona, is uh, Rona the Riveter, and then the Traveling Quilters Group. That's right. Steve, anything from you? We love having you on camera, even if it's for the last five minutes. He's got uh -huh. muted. He's, he, he, he's done it. I'm getting it. excited I'm about, I'm actually going to get my office cleaned. I have needed, I have needed the motivation to do this for quite some time. And this is, this is exactly what I needed. Do you want to come and clean mine? No, yeah. thank you. I'll bring you back with me to Indiana. You can do mine too. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, Lisa's downstairs, I'm upstairs. So it's not a big, I don't have to travel far. And he still told me no. Anyway, guys, have a blessed night and we will see you soon right here at Quote Babble Live with Lisa and Rona. Have a good one. <laughs>